Hi, I'm Glenn Ford and I'm here with Mike Hutchinson. Uh, we are games designers who work together on each other's projects and so we're going to be having a chat today about um, a little project that Mike's got going on called Mystic Skies, uh, which is um, a, uh, a magic fantasy uh, game based on some of the Gaslands mechanics that uh, gamers will be familiar with. Um, and is going to be launching in uh, Blaster magazine um, in its next issue. So, uh, first of all, Mike, uh, can you give us a general overview of what Mystic Skies is? I can, Glenn. Uh, Mystic Skies is a, it's a tabletop miniatures skirmish game. Um, and as you said, it uses the uh, movement templates from Gaslands, uh, although it uses them in a a, a new way and the central uh, idea of the game is that you are a wizard and you are a wizard riding about the desert on a magic carpet or possibly some other mystical flying creature but right now magic carpets and you are uh, in possession of a tower of sorcery and your opponent also has a tower of sorcery and so the uh, the job uh, the job uh, at hand is to scoot across the board and blow up the other guy's uh, tower of sorcery whilst monsters get in the way and minions get summoned and uh, you zip around casting all manner of um, badass spells and generally being a sorceress type cool um so uh first thing uh that i think is kind of interesting about uh mystic skies is um although there's uh dice rolling and some sort of uh randomness and range in what your spells do there's no randomness on whether you get to do your spells uh you 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 pick your your badass spell to drop on somebody and it will happen do you want to talk a little bit about that as a, a sort of a design decision to uh to cut out the randomness as to whether or not you can do the thing and yeah. uh, just let people pull out pull out the wizardry yeah i guess it's um it's worth saying that the design process for mystic skies was extremely compressed uh, i had a uh, I had this, the, the idea for this magic carpet um, zooming about uh, uh, skirmish game, which in my mind was like a sort of frost grave sm smashed into Gaslands and see what came out of it. Um, and the really strong um, visual image was uh, Bullfrog's magic carpet game from the 90s. So that experience of playing that game was kind of what was the root of wanting to do uh, this project and this game. And in that game, you rush about collecting uh, little glowing mana uh, globlets and you blow stuff up mm -hmm. and they spill mana out and that allows you to cast more and cooler spells and get more powers and grow your tower and stuff. All of which sounded absolutely perfect for a skirmish game about killing monsters and blowing up other people's tower. But it turned out that it was really difficult to uh, get right or to, to make balanced um, as an experience so um, as the game it developed and as it emerged like one of the things that was true is that um, as you collected mana uh, it just became really like the, the turns became really swingy on whether you collected enough mana to have enough magic dice to throw out these spells and um, because the game is entirely about being a cool wizard um, there were moments where you were not a cool wizard, you were a lame wizard. And that was just really sad for all concerned, particularly when you're zooming across the desert on a magic carpet, failing to be a cool wizard. So, yes. um, yeah, there was just, a, there was a moment probably two thirds through the playtesting and design um, period where I think, Glenn, you and I just both looked at each other virtually across Tabletop Simulator <laughs> and went, hmm, maybe you just do the cool spells automatically. And once you did that, then the game was instantly better. It was about what spells do you cast rather than do you cast the spell? And that is ultimately a fundamentally more inter interesting question because stuff is happening and you know that something is going to happen. And the question is just which thing did you choose to happen? Uh, yeah, so that's... Um, yeah, that, that was a cool thing. And I remember the same playtest wash-up session deciding... Um, maybe uh maybe wizards are also immortal and you can't attack them because they're essentially your magical mouse cursor for doing cool stuff around the board and that seemed really unintuitive but 
instantly instantly works as well because then you're a badass wizard that can do whatever they like and also can't be stopped and so the question is how do you stop what i'm doing if you can't stop me and that um created a bunch of fun dynamics on the tabletop mm. yeah i think uh, we were talking at various points about it being a bit more like uh almost like a, a god game um and also it has um so you mentioned the wizard's towers uh, it is mm. fundamentally uh well let's say a, a tower defense game in many ways in that yeah. your wizard cannot die um but what what loses you the game is that your tower gets smashed in yeah. um so obviously that creates uh a slightly interesting well a very interesting dynamic but a slightly weird dynamic where the thing you're defending is completely stationary and the thing that you're defending it with is incredibly fast moving mm. uh so do you want to talk a little bit about how you managed to balance out and figure out those sort of um clashing dynamics in the game yeah so the there was there was a i went on a walk quite early on in the design process where the game was sort of coalescing in my mind and off my notepad and i went for a walk and realized that um the thing that was really important to me was that your wizard was like they were in charge and they were really powerful and they had all of these jobs that they could do and some sort of minions and monsters that could also help out but the minions of the monsters were kind of rubbishy and unpredictable and they just wouldn't get the job done and i have to do everything around here and so the idea of a slightly like an all-powerful but slightly frustrated wizard who has to zip about the board going oh can you just fit? Oh, okay do i have to do this and i have to do that and then this became that sort of funny idea became the tension between okay um, I've got to defend my tower, I've got to destroy your tower, I've got to prevent the things that are in the middle of the board that are going in one direction or the other to stop me from um, uh, from winning. So I've got to be in lots of different places and that means that having a sort of a Gaslands powered extremely fast uh, five or six moves a turn type wizard, um, it, it isn't like, I mean obviously we both have one so it isn't unbalanced, but it's like it's not an unbalanced uh, playing piece on the board because it has too many jobs to do and it can't be in everywhere can't be everywhere at once and also because it's using gaslands movement templates it's not like one of those flying monsters in warhammer where you just get your 20 inch tape measure and you just go i'm over there i'm over there mm. um so you sort of you either end up sort of looping around in front of your tower casting defensive spells and gathering monsters to your cause and such like or you go on a sort of big looping bombing run and you go and cast some sort of mega meteor type spells at the other guy's um tower before looping back to try and mop up the um chaos you've left emerging at your own uh, base mm -hmm. now uh, a lot of the games that you've put out before and and put in the future are uh uh, miniatures agnostic don't have a miniatures range etc um i understand that mystic skies has got some pretty swish looking dudes on carpets being produced by uh sean sutter um do you want to talk a little bit about yeah that's absolutely right so it is definitely miniatures agnostic um the system is is, is nice in general you have a wizard you have some minions but they've got general names like warrior uh, archer and uh, engineer so you can kind of use any D, &D models or warhammer models or any or malifaux models or anything you've got lying around uh, to represent those and then you've got some monsters and the monsters that pour out of the portals into the desert have all got lovely generic classes like um like uh gigantic beast and um uh, bowman evil bowman and evil uh champion and stuff so you can use pretty much anything for those however um the way that this project emerged was um we were uh we were having one of our regular blaster blast nerds um sort of skype calls and we were trying to figure out well we were de debating amongst ourselves which um projects we would be including in volume two after a reasonably successful launch of volume one and everyone was very excited and people were discussing what they were planning to do in volume uh, two and i pitched a couple of ideas because i had a few things but i hadn't really committed to anything and i tossed out the idea of mystic skies being this magic carpet frostgrave meets gaslands thing and sean got super excited and um he'd been doing some sort of arabian nights type themes had been creeping into some of the stuff that he's been doing for relic blades um some of the illustrations and some of the models 
and he uh, and I just got chatting about the possibility of maybe doing the game together because he is uh, a phenomenal illustrator um, as well as a sculptor. And so we went away from that conversation and I was like, ah, oh, amazing, I have to make this game, but urk, I only have three months to do it and I haven't really started <laughs> it. I hope Sean... Uh, Tons of time. It's going to forgive me <laughs> this rather scrappy uh, period. And then he went away and just came back like that evening with these awesome gnome and goblin sort of sorcerers on magic carpets um, with this really um, very, uh, very awesome aesthetic. Um, yeah, so I mean, it is miniature agnostic. I've got a little dude here that's like a, a sort of Arabian sorcerer that I picked up off some uh, random miniature collection. And then this is a piece of uh, drinks can that I cut out and stuck some material on top of. And then, of course, because it's drinks can, you can bend it into the right shape. Um, so, yeah, uh, miniatures are and will be available um, from Sean actually because he was running his Kickstarter for the new starter box for Relic Blade at the same time. Some of the models for Mystic Skies are included as. Um, uh, add-ons and um, uh, reward levels for um, um, the Relic Blade Kickstarter as well. So yeah, they are being produced and should be out in the universe pretty soon. So that's cool. This it, is actually the first game I've done with a miniatures range. Hooray. Yeah, yeah. We've, I know it's sort of you could use any miniatures you like, but here are some miniatures that specifically you could use. Uh, is there anywhere online or such like that people might pop along to look uh, at or for those minis? Yep, so type Relic Blade, all one word, into Google, and Metal, uh, Metal King Studios website will present itself, which I think is relicblade.com, but um, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, so you've mentioned uh, Blaster there, saying that Mystic Skies is going to be in the second issue of Blaster. Uh, for those who don't know, do you want to tell us a little bit about what Blaster is, how it came about, and... Uh... Yeah. So Blaster yeah. is a uh, it's a periodic uh, war games anthology. It is available in print on demand uh, and digital as well. Um, and it's a it's an experiment actually. Um, Joe McCulloch, Frostgrave Joe, um, sort of blew his horn of Gondor uh, and <laughs> summoned to him a, a gang of games designers that he liked and thought might work well um, as a sort of cadre. And so. Um, Ash Barker from uh, Guerrilla Miniature Game, um, the YouTube channel, but also a uh, writer of uh, Last Day Zombie Apocalypse yep. or Osprey Games, um, was combined with uh, myself and Joseph Maguire, who's written um, This Is Not a Test, the post apocalyptic skirmish game, but also wrote Reality's Edge for uh, Osprey. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and Sean as well. And so we kind of gathered together and um, Sean knew a fantastic graphic designer called Greg and uh, we liked him instantly and totally clicked and so then there were six of us who just really wanted to make a magazine together um, or a kind of anthology and it's it's moved from being like the original idea was a magazine but this one definitely feels like something that we want to um, not feel like it it matters when you buy it like the fact that the uh, the last mm. uh, the first volume came out a while back like none of the content is time specific and it doesn't really have a kind of um magazine -y feel to it so yeah mm. so it's a series of war game anthologies and each one theoretically will have a chunky beautifully designed filled with photos and illustration expansion for one of our uh, for one of our systems and so it's kind of like Joe originally pitched it to me as like the stuff that we're kind of gathering together and putting out anyway to support our games like why don't we put that together mm -hmm. bind it up make it totally lovely and then use each other's kind of networks to give it a bit more oomph and uh, get it out in front of more people um, but I think actually like un like the slightly more misty-eyed version of it is that we all kind of we all really want it to be something which um, uh, highlights sort of the strength of independent uh, skirmish games and that puts a little mark in the sand that says like really interesting stuff is happening in this uh, design space at the moment and like here's a sort it'll of make you believe huh it'll make you believe again in the exactly. power of independent gaming exactly exactly <laughs> and so yeah it's kind of like a, you know we like to think of it as like a early dragon magazine an early white dwarf like it's it's just like a, a melting pot of crazy stuff um but super high quality yeah yeah uh because yeah and the the our, our contribution to that first one is the uh mars martian racing federation for 
Gaslands, which is yeah, which was which was always supposed to be a sort years. of expansion or game mode for Gaslands, and and mm. we couldn't get it to work to my satisfaction uh, for the Gaslands re refueled thing. And what's kind of fun is that it ended up in um, Blaster Volume One basically as a completely standalone game. So by the time I'd finished mm. writing it, like it has a beginning, middle, and end. It has all of the rules that you need to play it. And so actually, yeah. when you pick up Blaster, you realize that the expansion to Gaslands, you don't even need to have the gas Gaslands rules for in order to play. Um, and so the same is no, going to be yeah. true for Mystic Sky. So uh, Blaster Volume Two is also going to have a complete standalone game in it. Um, so you don't need anything to play um mystic skies you don't need to know anything about gaslands you don't need to know anything about relic blade um uh which the universe uh, it exists within yeah okay uh so i know that you can get blaster on uh drive through rpg um is there anywhere else uh, that it can get picked up and i know it doesn't particularly matter if you follow along issue to issue but roughly what's the uh the release schedule for people who want to sort of get it into their uh, into their calendar yeah so uh i mean drive through rpgs is how we're producing it and distributing it so uh, you can hit up blaster-mag.com which is where our uh, little homepage lives and you can get um email notifications there about when the next volumes uh when they arrive the volume two with mystic skies in is coming um hopefully before the end of uh september this month uh, cool. volume three We'll see, might be along just before the end of the year. Um, we originally had set ourselves a reasonably aggressive uh, release schedule, but um, honestly, we're more excited to put out the best quality content that we can rather than mm. um, hitting a um, particularly rigorous schedule. Issue three might have something where you do need Gaslands uh, courses yes. to play. Is that, so is that yeah, the, uh... volume three, well, we can maybe talk about it in a in another video, but Volume tr Three will yeah, have yeah. some uh, Gaslands expansion in it. Yeah, cool. Finally, some people will be saying, <laughs> I, th "I I I I think people would be plenty satisfied with what they've uh, what they've gotten out of it so far." Well, it's like I put a blog I put a blog post up on the Gaslands website about a month ago, six weeks ago. <clears throat> sort of explaining how I was a little bit burnt out on designing for Gaslands. Like I'd done a ton of work on it um, for Refueled. And so like uh, Billion Suns and Perilous Tales and Mystic Skies were all like palette cleansing. Like I'm not really a, I'm not really a do one thing for ages kind of a guy. I'm more like procrastinate on project A by doing project B and then procrastinate on project B by doing project C and then get back to the beginning kind of a guy. Yeah um but yeah only like a week after writing that blog post saying oh i'm kind of burnt out on gaslands we'll see if anything happens but i'm not promising i was like bah, i've got an idea i need to do it now <laughs> so yeah yeah, we'll, yeah uh, and we'll the, the we'll we'll we'll, we'll <laughs> possibly save that for the next video but it's been it's been fun to see you get excited about gaslands again to be honest it's uh yeah, yeah it's been nice it's good i like it well you know yeah <laughs> well you know yeah well i like i like seeing you sort of getting fired up about things again but we'll we'll, we'll chat about that next time um yeah so uh obviously you can uh you know, there'll be links through to every, uh, blaster and mystic skies and everything from your uh website as well because i know that uh is the mystic skies original beta sort of version still somewhere online or is that gone no actually this is the first game that i've put that i will have put out that has no public beta so that's kind of scary Ooh. because um, <laughs> Billion Suns, Gaslands, and uh, Perilous Tales have all had like multiple hundreds of people touching them before it gets released. Mm. Um, and it's it's worth saying like Sean and I like are both quite excited about it, and we're not we haven't committed to do anything further with it, but we might do something further with it, and we might you know blow it up into a proper full size thing mm. and maybe release it um through metal king studios and do something a little bit larger with it but um yeah so perhaps blaster yeah. volume two is the kind of open beta but it, like it's good and it's done like it's fine it's not a, oh no no not I mean, a test yeah game, but it yeah it's kind of scary it's setting been... it out there without all of that additional validation yeah, I mean, already behind it, me. it it's been interesting anyway play testing it um primarily digitally which uh is a is a very new experience yeah i haven't I mean, played um mystic skies physically with anybody else i've played it a lot on my playtesting table here and we've played mm. it a few times on tts and i've played it a bunch with sean on tts but uh 
Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, weird. but I think yeah, it's been it's been it's been a funny uh Jesus, what, nine months? Something like that now. Um but yeah, fantastic. So yeah, if everybody looks out for Mystic Skies, uh check out Blaster and uh hopefully we'll chat again very shortly about uh possibly gaslands and possibly other things. Great. Well, thanks, thanks a lot, Mike. Bye. Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.